five formation. Dorsey drops back, throws over the middle, caught Davenport, over the yeah. line, into the end zone, rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricane! Oh, what a beautiful call! Winky in the shotgun, fires over the middle, and it's intercepted by Reed at the two-yard line, pushed into the end zone, and Reed with the INT. The Canes will have it at the two. Winky throws over the middle, intercepted, Morgan, he takes it over the 5, the 10, the 15, 20, and brought out of bounds at the 23-yard line with 6 seconds left in the half. Dan Morgan with the INT, yeah. return back Florida State. First and goal from the 13-yard line of Florida State, Dorsey drops back, has time, throws over the middle, good, touchdown Hurricanes, Jeremy Shockey, the Canes take the lead. from the left hash. Snap is down. Bunyan's kick is on the way. And it's no good! No good. It's no good. Really. No it's good. one right! The Canes win! Yeah. The Canes yeah. beat Florida State! 27-24! My goodness! It has always been in this program. Always! It's family. And we depended on guys, everybody, from scout team guys getting us ready, for guys on the special team playing today, Former players that were on the sidelines cheering their hearts out, bleeding for you. Guys, let me tell you something. Don't ever, don't ever not cherish, don't ever not cherish the moment. It's a great job by everybody. Great team. Well, you just saw it, a great victory last Saturday in the Orange Bowl against Florida State. Head coach Butch Davis will be here to talk about that win over the Seminoles. There was certainly something in the air at the Orange Bowl last week, and it just wasn't on the field. It was outside the parking lot. We'll go tailgating. Also, we'll talk about wide right three. Well, our hurricane football flashback will go back to wide right two. And junior cornerback Mike Rumpf will be along. All that more coming up on this week's Butch Davis Show. You're watching the Butch Davis Show. We'll be right back. Promotional considerations have been provided by Cane Sport Magazine, America's foremost authority on the Canes. Get Cane Sport delivered to your home or office or subscribe on the internet. Call 1-800-635-2263 or visit Cane Sport on the web at www.thecanes.com. Welcome back to the Butch Davis Show from the Wellness Center at the University of Miami. I'm Frank Fort along with the head coach of the Hurricanes, Butch Davis. And Butch, we've been doing this show now. This is our sixth year together, and uh, congratulations. I mean, I know it's been uh, something that's been stuck in the back of your mind to, to get over the hump against Florida State. And after the game, you kind of downplayed what it meant to you personally. But I think deep down inside, as you reflect on it, you've got to be just ecstatic about yeah. it. Well, you are. I mean, clearly, it's, been, it's the measuring stick by which this program has been measured for 20 years. But Florida State against Miami or Florida, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a great win. And it's done an awful lot for the program. Obviously, it's rejuvenated everybody in South Florida for hurricane football but still the bottom line is is that the players helped make it uh, happen. Uh, they're the ones that played and they played their guts out and they played as hard as they could and it was good to see them get the reward of a victory. Yeah, there wasn't a kid that was on that field that didn't play their hardest and as you said, spill their guts out. And I'll pull out a phrase here I heard this week. Sports doesn't build character, it exposes it. And it, I think that certainly fits your football team this week. Yeah, absolutely, Frank. Uh, you know, you just, you, you get a sense of the commitment of your kids have to the program when you see them, you know, being injured either during the course of the game or prior to the game. Damian Lewis cutting the cast off. Leonard Myers, who really probably shouldn't have and, and didn't play in the first half, saying, hey, guys are cramping up, guys are hurt, I got to go out there, I got to help play. Uh, Jeremy Shockey getting injured in the, in the first quarter, coming back, three catches in the two-minute drill. I mean, when kids have that much uh, commitment to the program and courage and character to play, uh, it's hard to be denied. Ken Dorsey certainly uh, played an outstanding game, a turnover-free game on his part, and led that last drive, and he certainly 
look beyond his years as a sophomore. Yeah, you'd have a hard time convincing people that he was a 19-year-old sophomore with only about six or seven games under his belt. But, uh, uh, you know, Kenny played exceptionally well. And, and one of the things that's always been one of the intangibles that people like about him is, is that he is very composed. Uh, you know, he acts a lot maturer than he actually is. But I think his ability to focus and compartmentalize, Frank, I think uh, all great quarterbacks have got to have the ability to let either previous games go or previous plays go. But how, whatever possession happened last time, the bad pass, uh, drop pass, those kinds of things, it's history with him. And you just focus on the next play, and it clearly gave him an advantage at the end of the game. And we got to give some big props to the offensive line. If I'm not mistaken, the starting five played every snap. We're close to it. And those guys did not allow a sack against a great pass rushing team. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Florida State, the pro scouts say that, that their three defensive ends are probably all going the first round, maybe early in the second round. So clearly those guys are outstanding players and our five offensive linemen. And not only did they give Kenny the opportunity to throw the ball and have some success, but the job they did in the running game, because trust me, you don't want to get in a one-dimensional ball game with any good football team defensively, and, and the ability for James Jackson to rush for almost 100 yards, DJ Williams, Najee Davenport, those guys uh, contributing. I think we had 140 yards, and that really helps your play action pass. The offensive line did an excellent job. And defensively, you made a ton of big plays in the first half, and you know, obviously in the second half they wore down a little bit. When you're defending 58 passes in a no-huddle situation, that, that's got to be rough on the defense. You know, Frank, it's probably, uh, we were talking with Chuck Pagano and Greg Shiano as we graded the film, 58 passes is the equivalent of the normal passes that you get in two ball games. So uh, you're talking about a defensive lineman having to rush and retrace and chase downfield, the ball being thrown every, they really speeded the tempo up the second half. They were snapping the ball every 15 to 18 seconds. They weren't using the, the full 25 second clock. So it really maximized uh, uh, the energy that you had to expend defensively. And I'm really proud of our defensive kids and, and uh, you know, the depth it really was going to become a factor late in that ball game. Unfortunately, the offense kept making some first downs, and, and that gave us a little bit of chance to recover. Uh, everybody stood out, but, I mean, Dan Morgan had a tremendous game. Ed Reed made a couple of touchdown saving plays. I mean, those guys just really, really they laid it on the line. Oh, they really did, and, and, you know, Danny's interception right before the half really was an emotional shocker to them because they really figured to come away with points. Uh, going in 17 to nothing was a huge lift to our offense. You never like to give up any kind of points. Even if we would have held them to a field goal, you don't like to give them that little extra edge. Uh, you know, your playmakers made plays. A guy that we haven't talked an awful lot about, Frank, that really played outstanding was William Joseph. Uh, as a defensive tackle, I mean, he was a huge force. He made several unassisted tackles. He was big in the middle. Really was instrumental in helping shut down Florida State's running game. And Florida State had less than 70 yards on the ground, and William Joseph was a big part of that. All right, let's hear what the players had to say in a very celebratory locker room afterwards. This is well worth any price you gotta pay. I give an arm and a leg just to feel this feeling. You know, we're all lucky and we're all blessed. And we're just happy to be here. We know Florida State was gonna come in here. We know they got their guns. We know they were gonna keep shooting. They're a good team. You know what I'm saying? We take our hats off to them boys. But we had to do what we had to do. The whole entire offensive line to allow no sacks against a great defensive line like they are. It's big for us. That was such a great game for us. It feels good, but it's just one more. We are on the road. This is one more. And we got to continue climbing the mountain. Coming up next, it's partying and poetry. We'll clear that up when we continue here on the Butch Davis Show right after this.